Good morning, everybody. My name is Martha Ward, and I'm your platform assistant this morning. And I want to welcome you to Wellspring and our Sunday service. We have a special guest here today, Reverend Bram Watson. Watkins, goodness, I'm sorry. I'm, okay. It's been a while. <laughs> so <clears throat> I have a few announcements. Early birds meet Sunday mornings via Zoom, and the link is in the weekly email or on our website. The speakers for this month are on a slide. So this mo next week we will have Dr. Edward Burlbaugh on the 24th, we have a special video. And on the 31st, we have Peggy Shin coming. And this morning, we have Reverend Bram Watkins. <laughs> so. And this Wednesday at 6.30 PM, our Board of Trustees meets virtually. And again, I think the Zoom meeting, the link is on the website or contact Edward Burlbaugh for that link. And lastly, our prayer team meets, remains ready to serve and support you. You may submit your request via our webpage or in the back of the sanctuary, there's a prayer request form and a box that you can put it in or you can put it in the collection basket as well. Our prayer team, um, you may also contact myself, Martha Ward, or Geneva Collins with your request. Our prayer team meets virtually on Tuesday afternoons at 445 to pray with you. You may consider sitting in your quiet space during that time and join us. We know that we are one in spirit and the energy of prayer knows no limits. So if you'll join with me this morning and Maybe take a deep breath or two to release any stress or tension. And know that we are gathered this morning to acknowledge that presence of that one great spirit. That one spirit that is the creator of all that is. That is present here. That is present in all places at all times. That spirit, which is love and wisdom, joy and beauty, all of the beautiful qualities of life. And we know that we are one with that spirit. And as we express spirit through ourselves, we are one with one another. And we are one with everybody here in this sanctuary at home and in our spiritual communities here in Las Cruces and throughout the world. And so it is with great appreciation that we come together and I release these words into the law and so it is. So Please stand if you are able and join us in the song of joy. We have a new song of joy today, as you may have noticed. Uh, and I want everybody to sing loud enough so that they can hear you on Zoom. Okay. Oh no, it, that'll pick you up, but it's got to be, you got to, you got to really sing out.
right, please be seated. And let us read together our vision, mission, and affirmation. Our vision to elevate spiritual consciousness in our world. Our mission to support individual spiritual quests through celebration, study, counsel, loving fellowship, and service. And our affirmations, I am aware of all the good that is within and around me. Good flows through me and out into the world, touching all with whom I interact. I recognize my divine center and know that this divinity exists in all that is. I am grateful for the creative power within me and allow it to flow and shape my experiences. So we now have special music with Barry. <laughs> Thank you, Barry, that was nice. The reading from this morning comes from Creative Ideas by Ernest Holmes. And this is a section on, I lift up my cup of acceptance. <clears throat> we lift up our cup of acceptance to the divine bounty when we think affirmatively and give thanks to the giver of all life. Daily, we should practice affirming that our cup is filled and running over, always remembering that what we affirm for ourselves, we affirm for others. Living and letting live, giving and receiving, loving and being loved, 
our experience is filled with God's abundance. I am living in the continual expectancy that every good thing in my experience shall be multiplied. There is neither doubt nor uncertainty in my mind. I know that the Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty has given me life. I have complete confidence in this Spirit and its action in my experience. I affirm that today is filled with blessings for myself and others. The past is gone, and I gladly release it and let it go. The present is filled with peace and joy, and the future with hope. Gratefully, I accept of the divine love and givingness and extend them to everyone I meet. I am made whole with the wholeness of spirit. I am guided into right action and successful accomplishment of all my good deeds. This I accept, this I experience, and for this I am grateful. And so it is. And now we welcome back after a three-year hiatus, Reverend Bram Watkins. Yay. There we go. Well, namaste, everyone. Good morning. So good to see everybody. And for those joining us on Zoom, blessings to you as well. As Martha said, ooh, a little loud, um, it's been three and a half years since I've been here. I, I can't, literally can't believe it's been that long. Um, thank goodness nothing's changed since then. Uh, three and a half years. It was March of 2018. So <laughs> I think uh, many wonderful blessings have happened to me, to me and for me since then. And a couple of seemingly, keywords seemingly tragic or unfortunate things have happened to me as well. I just, well, I, I've told this story before. Y'all remember that story about the, the gentleman that had so much land that he couldn't farm at all. And the villager said, oh, it's so sad. And he said, maybe yes, maybe no. And then his son found that wild stallion and the villager said, oh, you're so lucky because now you can use the horse to plow your fields. And he said, maybe yes, maybe no. And then his son was riding the stallion and he got bucked off and he broke his leg. And they said, oh, how unfortunate, how unlucky you are. Well, maybe yes, maybe no. And then about a week later, the, the king's men came through trying to get all able-bodied men to go off and fight in some war. And they said, how lucky you are because your son can't go. And he says, well, maybe yes and maybe no. So as I think about that, I think about my, my, my brother, Reverend RJ. And he would tell me, I said, you know, what does that mean, RJ? He said, well... It's short-term versus long-term. He said, you know, we often see things in the short-term or the short view, where spirit looks at it as the long-term or the long view. You know, we often see seemingly tragic or inconvenient things in the present, uh, where God sees these things as more of just maybe a course correction. So it's usually my judgment of the situation versus the, the complete availability of true peace that's available through, through spirit. It just depends on what side of the the coin I suppose I'm looking at. So I believe that we should be thankful or find gratitude in things. And I even found some scripture to back that up. I think there's some guy named Paul that wrote part of the New Testament. Testament. He talks about in, in Thessalonians, it says, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And so metaphysically we translate that into using our Christ consciousness to be thankful in all circumstances. So I kind of like that. So a few weeks after I spoke here the last time, which was March of 2018, I met the love of my life. It's fantastic. My friends would say, oh, you are so lucky. Maybe yes, maybe no. <laughs> Don't tell her I said that, by the way. <laughs> and then my friends find out, well, she lives in Florida. How unlucky you are. Maybe yes, maybe no. Kind of funny. 
so that was, you know, that, in fact, that was Easter of 2018. And a few months later, Baylor moves off to go to school down at, at University of Texas. And just like every other parent in letting him go, I think I cried all the way home driving from, from, from Austin. I mean, it was, that, that was a lot harder for me. But the different things and the challenges that we go through. A few months later, over the course of about six weeks, now this would have been like mid-October to <clears throat> through November, I lost three of my mentors. I lost my brother, Reverend RJ. He had been in ill health and made his transition. I missed, um, I lost one of my, um, my work mentors. Frank, my general manager, moved home to Kentucky to take care of his mom, as he promised he would. And then the day after Thanksgiving, my dad decided to make his transition and I lost my life mentor. And so anybody that would know me would say, oh my gosh, Bram, how, how horrible that you life lost all these mentors that you've had. And I just look at it like how grateful and how much better off I am to have had them in my life to guide me to begin with. But a very, very difficult time. So it says, in all things, give thanks. It doesn't say for all things, give thanks, but in all things. So I was grateful that in my dad's passing that he was no longer in pain. I was grateful for all the wonderful things that he taught me. I'm grateful for how hard he worked and how smart he worked and how he provided for his family over the years. Grateful for a million things when I think about my dad, but I'm not grateful for his passing. Thornton Wilder said, the highest tribute to those who have passed is not grief, but gratitude. And so I'm grateful for my dad. In all things, give thanks. Where is our focus? What are we giving our energy to while we're going through the fire, the challenge, the problem, the divorce, the health scare, whatever one we call the poop? <laughs> where, where, where's our thought process when we're having to go through that? Our challenge is to find something to be grateful for in the midst of our pain. While I'm a firm believer that we should acknowledge and experience whatever it is, because I think we've brought it into our experience, whether it just happened, whether we created it, or even whether we co-created it or not, it's apparently showed up for some reason and it's got to be dealt with. I say experience and accept the emotions that go with it. I tell people to wallow in it. Just get it all over you. I mean, because it's came about, the, the lesson's here for us at some point. That creates a, a, a strong memory and reminds us really how, I don't want to say how bad things are, but how difficult they might be so that we can use that energy and, and remember that so that when things are better, they're just that much better because we remember what the opposite was. Feel the pain right now so that we can, in the future, rise above this. Find something to appreciate. So I think we, we, we go from the problem. I'm going to call it the poop, if everybody's okay with that. We go from the poop to find something to appreciate. And in finding something to appreciate, that can turn the energy into gratitude. And then that gratitude shifts into joy. And so I think it's those four things. The, the problem finding something to appreciate, then gratitude, then joy. I mean, it, Tony Robbins said one time he was on Oprah and he said, you know, what, what good is it for me to write another book, have another seminar, buy another island if I'm not joyful in the moment? You know, Abraham says that the, the quality of, of life is not the amount of things that we have, but the amount of joy that we experience. But Tony said, how do you go from the problem <clears throat> to what I call joy, what he calls ecstasy? And he says, there's got to be a step in between, and that's finding something to appreciate. So you got to have something to appreciate, because I'm not downplaying the problem, but it, stay there as long as you want to. But at some point, you got to get out of that. And so he says, find something to appreciate. In all things, give thanks. So fast forward to the fall of 2019. It's about a year later now. And my son is back in school at Austin and we haven't seen him since August and he's having a tough semester and, and it's a lot harder for him this year. He's been super busy, really stressed and his mom missed him a whole lot. So I flew his mom down and only had time for a, for a day. So I flew his mom down just for the day. You know, kids need their moms in a different way than they need their dads and that's okay. Sometimes you get the big piece of chicken. Sometimes you don't as a dad, as Chris Rock says. But I told him he was smart enough to muscle through the semester if he had to, but that it would be difficult and it would take a lot out of him. I, I, I asked him and I recommended to him that he start meditating again, take a little bit of time, get silent, go within, listen to that still small voice. 
reminded him that if he would just tap in, tune in, turn on, that things would be a whole lot easier. He would still have to work, but things would come to him easier. It's like when they asked President Lincoln if they, he said, uh, if you had eight hours to chop down a tree, what would you do? And he said, I'd spend the first seven hours sharpening my ax. And that's lining up our energy. So I reminded Bay, I said, bud, if you'll just line up your energy first, everything else will come a whole lot easier. So he had a great visit with his mom and told me that now he writes down five different things each day for what he's grateful for. You know, it kind of reminds me of uh, uh, Reverend Chris Chenoweth, who was with Unity years ago. And he distributes a uh, gratitude journal right about this time of year, right before Thanksgiving, and just reminding people to write things down that you're grateful for. And I always thought that was just kind of nice, but now I understand it is truly transformative for me to get my mind right and to be grateful so that I can create the different energy to get out of the problem or wherever I am to get to where I want to be. Joy, peace, and harmony. So even as Baylor was stepping into the unknown of college and things like that, we as adults, we still have those things that we deal with. But my perspective of stepping into the unknown over the last three and a half years has been a little different. In November of 19, I stepped into the diagnosis of a cancer diagnosis that I did not want. <laughs> uh, I stepped out of my comfort zone by being willing, and willing enough, if not crazy enough, again, hopefully she's not watching, to get married again. And having to step up, which we've all had to do through COVID, you know, whatever it's done to our business, our health, our friendships, things like that. So it's, it's been an interesting last 20 months. So faced with a health diagnosis that I didn't want, didn't expect, and did not like, I had to decide how I was going to respond to that. No matter how the ailment showed up, whether I co-created it or I didn't, it doesn't matter how I look at that stuff. What matters is I believe that I'm 100% responsible for how I respond to it. So personally, I decided not to speak of it. I didn't tell anybody. Close family members knew, but that was about it. I knew that they would stay focused on keeping me in their highest and best, seeing me at their highest and best and not feeling sorry for me. You know, it was that way when my mom had uh, West Nile virus, people would say, oh, well, you know, how's your mom? And I said, oh, well, she's great. Well, I'm going to pray for her. And I would say, sometimes I'm not such a pleasant way. Well, Martha, how do you know my mom? Let me tell you how you're going to pray for my mom. You know, you're going to see her up here singing and happy and joyful. I believe one of the best prayers we can offer somebody is seeing them at your best memory of them, whatever their highest and best is. And so I knew my family would see me that way. I also spoke of the diagnosis as a challenge or an opportunity. Never once did I use the C word to describe the temporary condition that I found myself in. This was not my disease, rather just an opportunity to get my mind right and shift some things um, as I saw them to be healthier. It, very simply for me, love more, judge less. That's what it comes down to. That's my mantra, love more and judge less. But when it was time for surgery, I did call in the backups. I called Reverend Bonnie, I called Reverend Terry, I called Reverend Diana down in El Paso, I called Chris Chenoweth, a close friend of mine in Houston, because I knew that they would pray for me and see an outstanding outcome and complete healing and function and awareness. And I'm happy to report I am 100% perfect and healthy and happy and whole and just a twisted in my thought process as I've ever been. So just as is, it couldn't be better. And I'm very grateful for that. But I chose to step into the unknown by giving my energy to my faith, not to my fear. Telling my diagnosis about my God, not telling God about my diagnosis. There's a big difference. Seeing it how I wanted it to be instead of the way it was. I really got focused on that. And so that gave me a great opportunity. I also stepped out of my comfort zone by being vulnerable enough to get married again to the most amazing and wonderful person. But I got that diagnosis three weeks before we were supposed to get married. And so I asked my doctor, dude, should I get married? And he said, well, do you love her? And I said, absolutely. He says, does she love you? And I said, yes, and I'm not sure why. And he said, yes, you should absolutely get married, Bram. Everything's going to be fine. So we did. And within a few months of being married, we stepped into the most inconceivable unknown that I, I couldn't even have imagined it. My wife lives in Florida with her daughter, and she lives there because we lost our custody case to get her daughter to move here. 
And it's all because, you know, and I, I was looking back through my notes, I did an entire sermon on four letter words here one time. And so I've got another four letter word to share with you. I'll keep it clean, Edward, don't worry. Zoom. The reason we lost this custody case was because of COVID and because of Zoom. My wife and I were with our attorney in Florida, but her ex was at his house, his attorney at her house, and the judge at her house. I am convinced that had we been in front of somebody, in front of the judge, that things would have turned out differently. Or at least that's my hallucination. So now we live bicoastally between the Rio Grande and Fort Lauderdale. Um, stepping out of my comfort zone into a new marriage, much less the one that's, you know, 1,600 miles away has been a challenge and it's been difficult. And I wish I could tell you that I handled that news in the healthiest of ways. I think I handled things better about my diagnosis than I did about losing the opportunity to have my wife and her daughter live with me. Uh, and I did not respond to it very well. And it took me a while. I wallowed in pity and self-doubt and other things that were not healthy for me. So use your imagination and I probably did it or too much of it. So what do you do when you're faced with this? Because, you know, change is inevitable, but suffering is optional. And I, I suffered for a while. And um, it took me a while to, to go from the, the challenge to find something to appreciate. But once I did, then the gratitude came and then joy. And so, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're not making lemonade out of uh, the lemons. I think we're making a Cosmo or something. You got to add some vodka in there, do something to change it because it was, it was pretty challenging, but we're, we're doing well. And I just, you know, I finally had to suck it up and just get on with things and really envision how things needed to be. You know, Abraham says, tell it like it is if you like it like it is, but if you don't like it like it is, tell it like you want it to be until it bees like you want it to be. I just had to change my story. You know, I could tell you the truth of how much I was suffering or how much it hurt, but that was only going to keep me in the exact same place. So I had to say, yes, it's a challenge and we're making the best of it and all is well. It's good and getting better. So got to start telling a different life story because, you know, s stuff happens as we go through life. And that's, that's keeping it pretty PG when I say stuff, because it's, it's been a challenge the last couple of years. But life isn't what happens to us. Life is how we respond to what happens to us. And one of the many things that, that did once I finally got my mind right, uh, help me, was a book I found called uh, The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. Very good book. Highly recommend. So in all things, give thanks. Whenever we've encountered a difficulty in our lives, the sooner we can shift that energy towards gratitude, it'll change our vibration and enable us to attract something more positive into our lives. I believe that gratitude heals our past as it creates our future. So you can fake it till you make it, or as Peggy Shin taught me, you can faith it till you make it. Either way, you must create the feeling of joy and have an attitude of gratitude to manifest what you want to get you out of the current unwanted condition that we're in. But even as Einstein said, the, the energy of the current problem is very different from the energy of the solution. The atoms, neutrons, electrons, everything is different. So you got to see it how you want it to be. Come up with the solution because as long as we're focused on the problem, we can't be focused on the solution. So what are we listening to? What are we thinking about? What are we ruminating upon? Because that's what we're giving our energy to. What, are, what future event are we planning? In all things, give thanks. You know, focusing on gratitude is like flexing a muscle. You know, you got to use it or lose it. Saying thank you in advance is, is an aspect of faith. And it affirms an abundant, friendly universe. Living from gratitude opens us up to receive. So whenever I find myself and I can't get to a, to a message, either up here or CSL or Unity in El Paso or somewhere, I'll, I'll end up turning on Oprah's Super Soul Sunday. Even watched a few minutes of it before I came up here today because that entire show is focused on gratitude. And that's where I saw the Tony Robbins um, article or, or show. And that's what reminded me of that. The most fundamental lesson you can take away from Super Soul Sunday is gratitude. It has its own energy field. Grace is transformative. The more grateful we are, the more grace mirrors the gratitude of what we have. 
And Oprah says, I know it's not easy to be grateful all the time, but I've learned that it's when you feel the least thankful that you are in most need of what gratitude can give you, which is perspective. So remember, if we're criticizing, we're not being grateful. If we're blaming, we're not being grateful. If we're complaining, we're not being grateful. If we're feeling tension, we're not being grateful. If we're rushing, if we're in a bad mood, we're not being grateful. Gratitude can transform our lives. So we have to ask this question, are we allowing minor things to get in the way of this transformation of the life that we want, or can we give thanks in all things? So allow me to end <clears throat> by sharing a couple of quotes. I, when I started going through this, I started saying, okay, well, I need some good gratitude quotes. And I've got page after page after page. So I'm going to narrow it down to a couple. Gratitude turns what we have into enough. Meister Eckhart said, if the only prayer you say is thank you, that's more than enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Gratitude makes sense of our past and it brings peace for today and creates a vision for tomorrow. Joy is the simplest form of gratitude. And when I, <laughs> Willie Nelson said, when I started counting my blessings, blessings, my whole life turned around. And gratitude is when memory is stored in the heart and not in the mind. Gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. It turns what we have into enough and more. It turns denial into acceptance, chaos into order, confusion into clarity. It can turn a meal into a feast, a house into a home, and a stranger into a friend. Developing an attitude of gratitude and give thanks for everything that happens to you, knowing that every step forward is a step towards achieving something bigger and better than your current situation. Gratitude is the healthiest of all emotions. The more you express gratitude for what you have, the more likely you will have even more to express gratitude for. And I'll finish with gratitude and attitude are not challenges, they are choices. And so I hope you make the choice to find gratitude, find the appreciation, and swift, swift change your energy, shift your energy to your highest and best. And so it is. Namaste. Thank you, Bram. That was really pertinent this morning. As I was um, getting ready for this talk, I read a chapter in Eric Butterworth's book on um, uh, success. And in that chapter on gratitude, he quoted that same quote from St. Paul of, in all things be grateful. And so as we bring this wonderful gathering together to a close, or we approach the close, once again, we turn our attention to that wonderful creative spirit that is present in all places, in all things, and in all situations. And that it is that seed of, gray, of sand that gets into the oyster that creates the pearl. And so each event in our life, whether we see it as wonderful and joyful or challenging. It all comes together in the long run. We see things today from our human perspective in the moment. But spirit knows all and sees all. And that in the long run, most often we come back over some of our challenges and we say, oh, I see what that's all about. How have I grown? What have I learned from that experience? And so we know that spirit is all wise and all knowing, all loving, all giving, all good. And as we relax into our day and and allow ourselves to be enfolded in the energy of this God Spirit. 
we join in oneness with that energy. And in so doing, we join in oneness with one another here and with one another of all of the members of our congregation, of all of the New Thought churches, of all churches everywhere, all spiritual denominations, all cultures and all belief systems across the planet. And if we release that criticism, we can allow the goodness to operate. And so for those of us who are in need of some support at this time, we see spirit entering in and opening our minds and our hearts to a receptive space to receive this divine wisdom and to receive this love. And in great gratitude, we open, as we receive, we open our hearts and our minds. And then that allows the process to continue on as we share that energy with everyone that we come into contact with. And my newest form of prayer is to say, I affirm the most beneficial outcome for each individual in every aspect of their lives. And I know that this is true. And so it is. And now we have special music once again.
Thank you, Barry. In the, this state of receptivity and gratitude, we acknowledge and receive our, as we acknowledge and receive our virtual and in-person gifts, we give great thanks for the offerings already given and those we will be receiving because we know that giving and receiving are both part of the one flow. We affirm that we are also part of that flow. We bless these gifts and know that they are multiplied throughout our community. So there are a number of folks who have contributed to the production of this service, and we are grateful for their service, and we thank you for joining us today. And lastly, stay around in the Zoom meeting after service to visit or join us in the social hall. Now, please stand and read with me the benediction followed by our congregational song. Spirit in the midst of us is mighty. Joy, peace, and eternal life flow through nature and flow through us into the world. And so it is.